Uh, my name is Rosie Boycott. I'm a crossbench peer in the House of Lords. I specialise in food politics and food and climate change. According to findings from the Food Foundation, more than half of the food eaten in the UK is ultra-processed, which means it's very high in calories but low in nutrition. This also means that people have lost connection to food, where it comes from, and how to prepare it from scratch in a raw state. Supermarkets say this is due to customer choice. Do you think customers or supermarkets drive the market? <laughs> I think they both drive the market, but primarily the system drives the market, and that is that the supermarkets drive the market. Because if you think back to what food used to be like, we didn't have whole aisles of crisps, whole aisles of processed food, whole things of cheapness. Food was grown in fields, food went to specifically to people. Now farmers are more like people on the conveyor belt manufacturing food rather than growing food and that forms part of the chain. And I think you only have to look at some of the headline figures that in the UK there's 113 billion involved in the food industry but only 8.1 billion of that actually gets to the farmer. So we're talking about over 100 billion that is in the system and the system is taking simple food ingredients and processing them or doing things to do with added value so that one bit of broccoli, which would cost one thing as a vegetable, can then become something way more expensive. I mean, yes, I believe that the food system we have now is dominated by a capitalist ethic which says, let's sell more products made from cheaper ingredients. It's what we apply to every system we have in the world, whether it's clothes or cups of coffee. And applied to food, it is causing a disaster. Do you think this situation disadvantages people in a low income and is a reason for the rise in food poverty? Without a doubt it disadvantages people on low incomes but I think it's a very complicated issue because we pay people too little. If you look at cheap food on a global level it's also to do with cheap lives. I mean governments like cheap food because then they can pay people less and they can get some kind of food. It's unhealthy food. So we have to start to decouple the, the externalities of the price of food, like the ill health, the planetary disasters, and that from what you actually have to pay for it yourself. But right now in Britain, if you want healthy calories, you're going to pay £7.50 to get a thousand calories of vegetables or whatever. And if you want unhealthy food, like chips, or whatever, you pay £2.50. So food is always the thing in any situation that gets squeezed. It's always the squashy part of the sandwich. You know, you can't negotiate your rent or your electricity bill, but my God, within a family or a school or a council or wherever you are or a hospital, you can shave a little bit more off the food bill. And that's what happens over and over.